This quiet-looking group of buildings is a battle headquarters. It's the West of Scotland Agricultural College's country headquarters at Achincrove in Ayrshire. And the battle it controls is a many-sided one. A battle to maintain and improve the standards of Britain's highly intensive agriculture. A battle against the pests and diseases which menace our food supplies and our industrial crops. A never-ending battle in which all the resources of modern science are engaged. A battle with one aim, to get the most and the best out of every acre. One vital section of this combined operation is the Department of Plant Pathology under Dr. John Granger. Among the enemies the department is fighting is one of the most dangerous of all, which is responsible for the loss of thousands of pounds worth of potato crops in many lands. One of the most serious soil-borne diseases in Western Europe, potato root eelworm. This research worker is preparing to separate out eelworm cysts from infested soil, which she does by using quite simple methods. The cysts are only about 1 64th of an inch in diameter, but they infest the whole of the soil mass. And fortunately, they float in water, which makes separation simple. She filters off the top of the water, in which the eelworm cysts are floating, and then recorks the flasks and shakes them up again to bring more cysts to the surface. The tiny cysts can now be identified by eye and prepared for microscopic examination. In any battle, the first essential is to know your enemy. So the microscope is one of the department's most important weapons. Each cyst contains a number of eggs and young larval eelworms, anything from 100 to 600 of them. The cysts are just big enough to be cut open by hand, but you need good eyes and steady fingers. They look harmless enough, but they're deadly. To take one example alone, in parts of Lincolnshire, eelworm has stopped potato cultivation altogether. Many methods of combating eelworm were tried, some of them effective, but much too expensive. Volatile materials, for example. But untiring research found the most economical material. Various compounds of mercury, which will control potato root eelworm at very low doses, about five pounds per acre, provided they are mixed very thoroughly with the soil. The next problem, therefore, was to find a method of achieving this thorough mixing. The small amount of mercury compound could be mixed with a larger amount of water or dust for ease of handling but water would be costly to transport, so the method chosen was to mix the five pounds of yellow oxide of mercury with 12 bushels or so of dust. These proportions were arrived at in the first place, of course, by tests on a pot scale. And this girl is preparing yellow oxide of mercury dust, known familiarly as YOM dust, for greenhouse experiments. A simple but effective hand duster was used to mix the dust into the potting soil. Dust and soil had to be very thoroughly mixed, foreshadowing the basic problem of the field scale experiments.
In a cool greenhouse, parts were filled with the treated soil and other parts with soil mixed with dust which contained no mercury compound. Potato tubers from the same batch were then planted in the two types of soil, treated and untreated, so that the results could be compared. Mercury compound treatment of various strengths was tried to arrive at the optimum economic mixture. Weeks later, when all growth had ceased, results were compared. The soil mass was eased from each pot. Samples would later be examined under the microscope, but an immediate examination by the naked eye and a magnifying glass gave Dr. Granger and his staff the first rough indication of what to expect. These indications were promising and were borne out by fuller examination. The test showed that treatment by thorough mixing reduced the eelworm infestation, seen here on the untreated roots, by anything from 60 to 89% and increased the yield of the tubers. Any skimping of mixing or the use of insufficient diluent resulted in less than 20% control of the eelworm and there was no increase in yield. Here is the meagre crop from an untreated pot. And here, the crop from soil treated with YOM dust. It was clear that thorough mixing was the key to the whole problem. And one means of checking the thoroughness of mixing methods was the use of radioactive iodine. Iodine-131 was used in place of the mercury compound and mixed with the soil by the various methods under consideration. A Geiger counter provided a simple and direct means of checking the evenness of distribution and thus the efficiency of the mixing method. It also provided a specification and it proved that the YOM dust had to be introduced into the soil at two levels, on the surface and seven inches below it. Dr. Granger estimates that this method of testing by radioactivity reduced eight years of work to six weeks. Good mixing was taken to mean that the added material did not vary much outside plus or minus 20% of the required dose. Thus, if the dose was to be 5 pounds per acre, at no part of the soil mass must it be added at a rate of more than 6 pounds, 120%, nor less than 4 pounds, 80%. Bad mixing varied widely outside these limits. This then was the problem to find a simple method of treating the soil after ploughing, which would also be cheap enough to be worth using for a potato crop. And thanks to the Geiger counter, that modern diviner's rod, the answer was reasonably quickly found. An answer which made use of a farmer's normal equipment, which was well within the range, for example, of a 35 horsepower tractor such as this Nuffield 3.
It was the rotary hoe type of cultivator. With the collaboration of Messrs. Rotary Hose Limited and Messrs. E. Allman and Company Limited, a prototype soil disease control unit was made. The unit is rear mounted on the Nuffield tractor and driven from the rear power takeoff. The exhaust from the diesel engine, controlled by a special valve, is led to the Allman duster. From the duster, the exhaust picks up a metered amount of dust and blows it through a closed circuit into a booster fan, which helps the dust forward, reduces the back pressure on the tractor engine, and most important of all, mixes the dust thoroughly with the exhaust stream. The stream is subdivided, for as we have explained, the dust has to be applied at the surface and at seven inches down. So one tube goes to a surface deflector and one to each of the duck foot tines. The rotovator, working to 9 inches, thus achieves a mix within plus or minus 20% in all parts. In normal use, the rotovator is fitted with shields to prevent the dust from polluting the air. The shields have been removed here and the distributors mounted forward so that the working of the unit can be filmed. Tests on a field scale show that this treatment gives an average reduction of 79% in the number of eelworm cysts attached to the potato roots. This reduction is enough to bring an economic increase in yield, as this crop shows, worth at least three and a half to four times the cost of treatment on soil with one cyst or less per gram of soil. It is very important to know the level of eelworm infestation of the soil before giving treatment, and the advisory services should always be consulted first. One economic factor is that the diluent used with the YOM dust is so light that a cubic foot weighs only 10 pounds, so at the most, little more than 100 weight per acre is needed. Here, in contrast, is a crop from untreated soil. The actual basic commercial cost of treatment cannot be given with certainty while the new method is still under development, but it is expected to be in the region of £10 per acre at 1959 prices. And the results speak for themselves. For this weight represents the produce of an untreated row, now compare the weight produced by a treated row, almost two and a half times as much. The treatment is not only a control for potato root eelworm, it is effective against certain soil-borne fungal diseases, including the serious club root or finger and toe disease of turnips and swedes. Indeed, having a suitable mixing machine, which has proved itself by results, we can now begin to reinvestigate the whole difficult question of the economic control of soil-borne diseases in general, a greater battle to which the fight against eelworm has pointed the way.